Now we get to maxims. This is my favorite part of the pragmatic section. Uh, a man named uh, H. Paul Grice formed a set of logical rules that everybody seemed to follow in conversation. And he described these in four maxims, or four ways in which people uh, follow norms and procedures when they converse. The first one is the maxim of quality. Simply put, don't say things you know to be false, so don't lie, and don't say things that you can't support, which people do all the time. We repeat things we hear on Facebook or Twitter with our friends, and we don't actually know if they're true or not. Um, for instance, did you know that stomach ulcers are not caused by stress, but a bacteria? Cold weather making you sick? It's not a cause and effect relationship. Microwave cooks food from the inside out? Not true. So these are things that people would repeat and are not true. So people say these things all the time and they're breaking the maximum quality because they don't have the evidence to support things they're saying. <clears throat> then you have the maximum of relevance, which is simply don't go off topic. Um, when someone asks, how was your trip? You say, did you pick up any milk? That's off topic. Uh, this is my favorite place to eat. And someone says, I'm not particularly fond of Germans. Like, those are not related to the topic. If you're going off topic, you're violating the maxim of relevance. Then you have the maxim of quantity, which I think you can guess. Don't say too much, but also don't say too little. If someone says, what do you do for a living? And you say, I work. That's too little. If someone says, what do you do for a living, and you say, I'm the 13th employee of a small company called Energetics, spelled with a K, that's way too much, right? You need to find a nice sweet spot between too much and too little. Otherwise, you're violating the maxim of quantity. Then we have the maxim of manner. Now, the maxim of manner is tricky because it has four subparts. The first one is avoid obscurity of expression. It means don't use things that people don't know. Don't use these obscure Latin or French terms like uh, persona non grata and ipso facto. That's not what normal people want to have as part of their conversation. Secondly, avoid ambiguity. Don't be too vague. Don't uh, be too um, open-ended with your answers and your questions. Uh, also, be brief. Uh, be orderly. Now, be orderly is a tricky one. You may have uh, had a friend or family member that you know that tells stories out of order a lot and they say they're doing something like, oh wait, let me go back and tell you about this part, and then they leap forward again to another part in the story and they come back to the middle. Those are bad storytellers. Uh, if we were in class, I'd let you use one of my slide uh, links and you'd be able to see a story from The Simpsons. So there's a link on my slides to one of the Simpsons episodes where Grandpa Simpson goes on a rambling tale um, and it never actually ends. And that's a perfect example of, of um, violating the maxim of manner, both, both as being brief and of uh, being orderly. So when we violate these maxims, as you've heard me say, that means that you break the maxim. You do something contrary to what these maxims dictate you should be doing. They're usually done for one of a few reasons. Either you're not a good conversationalist, Either you're lying, or you're a bad storyteller. Uh, the second one is if it's for an overriding purpose. You're doing it on purpose so that you can achieve some goal. Sometimes that goal is comedy. A lot of comedians subvert these maxims. They flout the maxims so that they can accomplish the purpose of comedy. Uh, sometimes it's to jump to ahead to a certain point in the conversation. Like if someone says, hey, do you know if Maxine's dating anyone? And you say, she goes to Cleveland on the weekends. Normally that might sound like you're being irrelevant, you're violating the maxim of relevance. But you might be saying, hey, I'm contributing this evidence that I think she is seeing someone because she goes to Cleveland every weekend. And so there's a reason to flout that maxim. Uh, and that's the term that we use when you violate a maxim on purpose, you're flouting it. You're intentionally breaking that, that rule. Another example is uh, avoidance. So uh, when someone asks you a, a personal or an invasive question, you might try to dodge that question or try to save face for somebody. So if someone says, hey, why isn't Jane here? And instead of saying like, oh, she has horrible diarrhea, you're trying to save some face for her and be like, oh, she'll be here in a little while. She just felt a little ill and you move on, right? You're, you're intentionally avoiding uh, and providing less information than you have so that you can uh, serve some social function there. Uh, and this is true uh, when your parents or grandparents ask you what's you know going on in your personal life. You might dodge and weave a little bit so that you can have some privacy. You're intentionally flouting the maxims. 
And again, if you look at my slides, I have uh, links throughout the Maxims area to show you visual examples, clips from shows or movies to illustrate the kinds of uh, flouting that's been going on. Uh, and that's it for Pragmatics. Like I said, it's a pretty short chapter. And again, if you need anything, please reach out to me through GroupMe uh, or email if you have to. Just like all of you, I have tons of emails coming through. I'm inundated. So it's not the best way. GroupMe is a great direct way to reach me. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions or make any clarifications uh, for you. Uh, and the next chapter I'm going to post uh, for you guys uh, will be done this way as well. And uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.